Jimmy line. Brian Gluckstein wants you to get outside. I love dying outside. All the time. I don't it, know what right? it is that yeah. we think it's so special, even in our own backyard. He's thought of every detail to elevate your outdoor dining experience. There's a cute little side table that opens as a cool. Oh, oh yeah. Then, what you need to know before listing your home. You know, have expectations, but realistic expectations. Okay. You know, we're realtors. Yeah. We're not magicians. <laughs> <laughs> and later, Chef Matt Dean Pettit was inspired by a recent vacation. Chef Matt Dean Petit, Petit if you will. In today's kitchen, we'll go by Petit. Yeah, because we are being very French today. We are. You have a yes, beret yes, well. on. I have a beret. Look this, at this. this is from France. It's City Life with Tracy Moore. my house was like this. It's so nice in here. Welcome to City Line. It's home day. Now, I don't know about you, but I am counting down the days to get into my backyard and enjoy some outdoor al fresco dining. So let's start outside, but inside, with my friend Brian Gluckstein. Let's do it! Hey! Hello. Hello, you everybody. this gorgeous set in here. Oh, set. my gosh. We it's beautiful. So, I mean, it's 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 cold out. Let's be real. Yeah, we did this because I can't take it anymore. It's <laughs> I need to feel like spring is on the way, which it is. It's, it's here. On the it's way. here. It's not on the way. So it's when here. you wake up in the morning and you put on your parka, please start exactly. thinking, though, every time we get to this time of year, Brian Gluckstein comes on here and he says, get your patio furniture. Right. And we might have flurries, and that's okay, because Correct. if you don't get it now, you're not getting the good stuff. Correct. Everyone calls me, you know, three days before the long weekend in, right. in May and say, can you just brush it for me? I'm like, you're it's a little over. late. It's over. You're yeah, late. you should have gotten it already. You can still get pieces, but not as much. You don't for get the sure. same assortment. Now, do you like to dine outside? I love to design, dine outside. All the about I don't know it, what huh? it is. That yeah. we think it's so special, even in our own backyard. Like, it's one thing if you're in Italy or, or Greece. Yeah. But even in our own backyard, we're so excited to eat outside. I just feel like we are catching up on patio culture and terrace culture in Canada. And yeah. so now every little bit that we get to have outside, it feels very, like, self-indulgent and it luxurious. Does. And it, it doesn't matter if you're on your, like, balcony and it's a condo. Who cares? You're outside and you're eating. It's you nice. know, I've seen probably in designing, you know, all this stuff, yeah. I've seen probably the last 10 years this huge spike in people being interested in decorating their outdoor spaces and really investing in the outdoor spaces. Because yeah. when you look at what it looked like 10 or 15 years ago, it was like, I won't even mention it. Yeah. It was bad. It was bad. It was bad. But now, they're beautiful. There's so many um, gorgeous patios now. But I have spent, like, quite a bit of time in one of my favorite outdoor spaces, which is Brian's backyard. Yes. <laughs> yes. You know, and I always threaten him. I'm like, one day you're going to come outside of those doors, and I will be in your pool. She's just, like, at the edge. <laughs> I will be out. on a floaty in your pool. So talk to me about this space. We're looking at it right now. We're getting some inspo. Is there, like, a favorite spot back there that you like to chill? Yes. That's my backyard. Those loungers Stunning. in the front. I like to sit under a tree. Yeah. And um, and before work, I sit outside and I have breakfast. That's very Even nice. Even if it's just like a yogurt, I just need to, and a banana, yeah. I just want yeah. to sit outside. Get some foliage, get some green. Um, it will be very nice and motivating to get outside if you have a set like this waiting for you. So let's walk through uh, this beautiful table, the chairs, the setting outside. If people are looking to update their patio furniture, they might want to go with a material like this one. Yeah, this is our Gluckstein home at, at Hudson's Bay. And I wanted this set to be sort of a transitional. You can see, let me see if I move the back. You can see this classic X pattern. Yeah. And this is typically done in wrought iron, mm -hmm. these, these classical designs. But you really want aluminum because aluminum doesn't rust. Right. So you can buy wrought iron furniture. It's very heavy. Yeah. Good if you're on a very high floor in a 
condo and you don't want this on the street below. Right. Um, <laughs> so you want you might want heavy up on a height, but aluminum is what you want to look for when you're looking at patio. It's lighter, too, as you mentioned, which I think is great because we're, you know, trying to put the furniture into our shed, shove it all in there over the winter months. So it's and nice if you've got light, lighter furniture absolutely. to do Absolutely. And we do tabletops, and you'll see it on the marketplace. It looks like wood, but it's also yes. aluminum. Yeah. So it's just printed aluminum, so you don't mm -hmm. have all the sanding and the splinters of real wood. Easy to take care of, low maintenance. Uh, I will say that we've come a long way, even with the outdoor the cushions. Yeah. Do you remember when we first started with outdoor patio furniture, there was like two colors? Yes. It was like red and blue. The bad. And they were loud they were red bad. and blue, they right? Were like, now we're like, oh, now we can we're do gray. Well, we're matching it to the interiors. That's right. So while we want pops of color outside, yeah. Let's bring in the, the same in the inside. Mm -hmm. You know, unless you really love a color and that's the color you always wanted, yeah. uh, keep the, the foundations neutral and do pops with the textiles. And bring these in or the raccoons are hanging out in your yeah. shed. Yeah, well, yeah, they eat them. But I'll tell they you a few out. things. One is, if you have cushions, really cover them or take them in when you're not using them. The fabric is outdoor. The water does go through the foam, but they'll last longer. Mm -hmm. And if you're storing them in the winter, either store them in something sealed mm -hmm. in your basement or in your growth. If you don't store them in something sealed, you may bring them out next year with mice inside of them. Oh, that's right. So put them yeah. in a bag or Ugh. seal it up or a box or something like right. that. There are covers you can do with zippers now where you put them inside, they can't get in. Zip it all up. Zip it up. I bring it all inside. Okay, let's talk about these beautiful pillows, um, yeah. which have also come a long way. Like these don't even feel, are they outdoor? Outdoor. So oh, the water goes so through them. The water goes, they're special foams. You can't just use any cushion outside. Right. Because some foam retains the water like a sponge yeah. and outdoor foams are like um, they, they have like uh, a structure to them that the water goes Filter all the way through, through the water yeah, which is really so good. it's not they don't just say it's outdoor it really is designed for outdoor well also if you're using the wrong pillows that you they can grow mold Yes, that's right? why you want to keep not them. The outdoor pillows. That's why don't leave them. They, they can be in the rain, but don't leave them in the rain. Make sure your sprinklers aren't going at them. And you yeah. can use these inside, which is great um, because if. Uh, one of you is drooling all over it you know, <laughs> while you're watching TV. It's uh, easier to clean. I'm not making judgment. I'm just yeah. saying. Oh, and, if you've got kids and dogs, like and do all of this dogs. stuff, can you use it inside? Exactly. You can and use then all on, of it. on cool nights, we want to have our our throws. This is nice. This is like these Turkish hammam towels. Yes, like yes, they're beautiful. Yes, so you want a... these nice big ta blankets outside? Yeah, it's. Uh, it's so soft. It's got yeah. the terry on the outside also. You can use them as a towel. Nice. Um, but I, I like to have throws outside. Sometimes I'm, you know, I used to be running inside where I could see someone was a little cool, even in the summer. Yeah. And, uh, and speaking of that, we, uh, this, we, we do these for Home Depot Canada. They're Gluckstein Elements. And there's all different heaters. We have one. It's a heater and a lamp. And, and a light. That's and, beautiful. And what you do, you, ha you see the ones that go over. You see the ones that have a shade on them. Yep. It's great to have tabletop ones mm -hmm. um, because it really evenly distributes. If you have one over here, the poor person over there is getting a little cold. Well, also, if you have one of the umbrellas that arch over, you maybe don't want another exactly. thing arching over, right? Exactly. So tabletop and, is nice. And if you buy a table that has a hole for the umbrella, even yeah. better, because you can just run the cord through the center and then off to the side. Beautiful. That's a significant amount of heat in there. I know. I know. Like, I'm starting to it's usually sweat so, a little bit. It's usually so hot in the studio, and today, for some reason, it's so cold. It's a and I'm like, oh, I love this. Right? It's warm. <laughs> This is on and it's warm because I want to see how far it spreads. Let's talk a little bit about the dishware. So first of all, nothing precious here. So no. you, you can take it outside and if it falls or if it's like the kind of party I like to go to and things are getting smashed, you're fine. Yes. Right? Yes. It's okay. You really don't want it's indoor break. dinnerware outside because no. you tend to be barefoot and... and um, we get unruly. Yeah. Well, you get unruly. <laughs> <laughs> but you want melamine. So this is yes. melamine, and when I designed these, I want them to look like old pottery. So they have a variegated finish on them, yeah. so they look like clay. And then, and that's where you have fun with color and layering, like all these. And then the glassware is all Beautiful. plastic, too. So really don't use glass outside. Yeah, I know. There's no need to now because you've got so much very good, like melamine and, and, and plastic sort of things that you can use outside. Um, what else is key okay, when you are dining is outside? A must. I don't care where you get it, but get it. Yeah. Are the umbrellas for the outside. Oh, that's cute. Because, and yeah. they're, you know, they're very affordable. Yeah. So um, I think these were like six for $20 online. 
but everyone can have their own at their table setting. Yeah, I'm tired of like shooing the, uh, the, flies. the flies. And they're yes. easy to store. Um, but oh, I love that. So it turns I, into a little, uh, you got a little umbrella correct. going on. So this is essential. Everybody, you have to have these if you eat outside. And if yeah. you're laying the food out on a side table, so mm -hmm. let's say you've got people all over the place here sitting on some chairs and you're laying all the food. You don't have to worry when you have these on there. You have yeah. no worry about the bugs getting to them. But that is my one thing. I It'll can't eat if I see a fly on food. Yeah, no, so I know, I get like, it. I'm it's... a little paranoid. The other thing, and the reason why you go outside and, and, and a lot of us go outside, is to enjoy some of the greenery in our backyard. So let's talk about these planters, because these, these are nice and light. You can just put the plants inside them, which is the way I like to garden. Correct. You don't have to fill it all the way up yes. with dirt. And that's great if you live in a condo, because right. you're not going to be schlepping up bags of soil. Yeah. You just bring these up. You put some riser inside if you want, mm -hmm. um, and then just put them on side. So Sheridan supplied all these flowers. I was so They're excited so to see real flowers this time of year and then yeah. they did the tree so they come in all different shapes the higher ones are great for the trees to give you that height mm -hmm. and they give you privacy on your deck or on your balcony this yeah. is great at the side if you have an air conditioning unit or something hose bibs things like that that you don't want to recycling see. bin any of that stuff Anything. that you want to cover mm -hmm. and then of course we have like the thing we should have started with Yes. The thing holding the wine, Brian. Holding the wine. That is a cute little side table. This is a cute little side table that opens as a cooler. Oh, yeah. <laughs> bottles on bottles. Very nice. Um, and all of it resting on this beautiful uh, rug. So yeah. I don't often see the outdoor rugs that are this big. How big is this, this one? This is 8 by 10. Now, you want it's nice. the same thing as you do on the outside. Yeah. You want that when you pull your chair out, you're still on the rug because there's nothing worth that worse than someone pulling their chair and the carpet's coming with it. Yeah. So you want your carpet to be probably about three feet bigger than the table all the way around. Mm -hmm. And again, here's where you can have fun with color. Yeah, and fun this with is pattern. beautiful. Once again, it's this come from a Home long Depot. way. I want that storage thing. I know. Okay, thank you to Sheridan Nurseries for the lovely planters. After the show, we're actually going to draw for these Veridec planters and the cooler. The cooler that I want. We're going to draw for it. Love. Share it with me. Brian, thank you so much. You're very welcome. We're taking a quick break. we got more coming up. Stay with us. Oh, that's so cool. Coming up, tips and tricks on how to master the real estate market. Understand and really believe in the process because you have a, you know, you have a unified goal. You all, you both want to sell this home quickly and for the most amount of money as possible. Oh, welcome back. Are you considering listing or purchasing a home this spring? It's a big deal. There's a lot you need to know before you first meet with an agent. So here to tell us all the real estate strategy and the secrets is real estate expert Rizwan Malik joining us. <laughs> When I told the audience we're going to be talking about all the secrets behind real estate, they were very invested, and it's because real estate is blood sport in this country. Like, Absolutely. we need the inside track. Yeah. Spring. The spring market is here. Um, I hear that this is a big deal. This is significant for people. Why is this time of year such a big deal? Well, Tracy, spring kind of signifies new beginnings. Yeah. So you have, like, a lot of families moving around spring. Okay. So there's tons of supply out there. Uh, and what ends up, ends up happening is, like, it does not disrupt the school year for their children. Okay. So it, it allows them to finish the school year wherever they're at and then also start their new year, like, in September at a new school. So you're not getting your kids to make new friends in the middle of October right. or, or in the middle of February. So, so if a lot they of have, like, an moving. April listing and they might have, like, a 60 or 90-day closing, that's going to make sure they're moving and yes. they're settled yes. by the, the, the new school year. They're the summer and then by the yes. time September rolls around, everyone's kind of settled. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense to yeah. me. Now, if you could tell your clients one thing before they pick up that phone and contact you or text you, I don't know, how do yeah, people yeah, do it yeah, now, yeah. what would it be? <laughs> uh, you know, like, under, understand that, you know, you have to have realistic expectations and work with your realtor. Understand and really believe in the process because you have a, you know, you have a unified goal. You all, you both want to sell this home quickly and for the most amount of money as possible. So right. trust in the process. So, like, 
I like that you said that. You have a vested interest in getting them as much money as possible. Absolutely. I want to sell their home as quickly as possible, yeah. get them over asking, and then also get their neighbors to list with me. So it's kind of like right. my own, my <laughs> job interview just continues. I'm not just selling this home and I'm done with my career. I right. continue moving on, right? Yes. So it's, it's, it's good. Like you have a common goal. Yes. So trust your realtor. Uh, is there a day of the week that is more favorable for listing a property? Absolutely. So you kind of want to be out at the start of the week, not on a Monday, because kind of new listings get, get lost in the shuffle. Okay. You want to be out maybe on a Tuesday or a Wednesday because, uh -huh. you know, it's the start of the week. And that way it allows realtors and the clients to schedule all the appointments for the upcoming weekend. Now, if you okay. come out on a Thursday or a Friday, the schedule is set. The realtor mm -hmm. may have other back-to-back -back appointments after you. You may have a children's birthday party. You may have mm. other prior engagements, and you can't squeeze in that home as much as you want to see it. It comes out on Friday. You can't squeeze it in without taking something else off. So mm -hmm. it's just not advantageous for a seller to do that. Okay, that makes sense. Now, what is the strategy behind the actual listing? What are you taking into account? So when it comes to, like, let's say you pick up the phone, you say, hey, Rizwan, come and list my home. Mm -hmm. I, I need enough of a lead time to be able to get my team in order. Okay. You know, from the photographer, if we're doing a pre-listing home inspection, the, my favorite inspector, the floor plan guy, you know, getting pictures touched up. I love listing um, all of my upcoming, my, uh, sorry, I, I love advertising my new uh, listings in the Globe and Mail. There mm -hmm. are lead times for everything, right? So mm -hmm. give me ample time so I can present your property as best as I can. Right, and if it has to be last minute, it has to be last minute, but we better to have it. more time. Yeah, yeah, well, we'll yeah. do it. It'll still look great, but I won't have my favorite photographer shooting your right. home. Right, and you know what you're going to get from that photographer, so yes. that's why you want that person. Yes. Okay, let's talk about the money. Pricing yes. is so controversial, and I can imagine this can be so challenging when this is your house it's yes. the most amount of money you have ever spent it's your cash cow and you have access to all this information how do you figure out pricing so again you know back in the day when i first started i'd walk into a listing presentation and i would inform them these are the stats these are the comps now when i walk into a listing presentation yeah. the client tells me well i know what this house sold for i know what that house <laughs> sold for i walked through this open house i saw this home and you know, I have an extra shelf under the, under the staircase, so therefore my home is worth more. Yeah. It's not always the case. We take into consideration the property type, the lot size, the number of bedrooms. Is there a basement? Is it finished? Is it a walkout? Is there parking? There are, you know, macro things that we focus on. And then, of course, a renovation definitely has um, a value associated with it. Yeah. Of the scale of the renovation. Yeah. Um, the other thing you also want to kind of really figure out is once you are uh, pricing your home, there are different uh, thresholds on okay. uh, Realtor.ca, for example. Okay. So the increments that they go up in. Don't shave off a significant amount of the market because you want your home to be priced at 955000 yeah. where 949 is the better marketable amount. Okay, so there might be, I, I didn't realize this, they mm -hmm. might, you know, they might have categories. So you want to be under that 950 to fit in that category. Yes, because at 955, you're cutting off a significant amount. Right. At 949, you might get extra eyes on your home and get extra offers and get 960 for it. Yes. There's a strategy. Trust in your advisor. Right. Rizwan knows what's <laughs> happening. And most, most of the realtors, time. <laughs> most, most realtors will. Like, so trust. Yeah. Okay, what is the strategy behind when you receive offers and how you take them in? So if you have uh, an offer night, which mostly that's the case, yeah. um, I suggest taking them on Monday because by okay. Tuesday or Wednesday, as I mentioned earlier, new when new listings. listings come out, interest gets divided. So you mm -hmm. want to strike while the iron's hot. More days on the market doesn't necessarily mean more offers. Mm -hmm. Five days, six days, more than enough. Take yeah. your offers on Monday. Don't let them be distracted by something shiny that comes out on a Tuesday or Wednesday. <laughs> right. <laughs> There's that new house I want to well, maybe get on, right? Uh, how do you feel about the number of days a home actually stays on the market? Is it a big deal? I mean, it's relative. Okay. In, our, in our current market or the last few months, 30 days, not a big deal. Mm -hmm. But, you know, what we were used to a year ago, two years ago, if you're out more than 10 days, terrible. What's right. wrong with the house, right. right? So it's all relative as to what the market conditions are. And the market, if it's slowed down, it's okay yeah. if it takes a month. For... It's a natural process. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah. Okay, I want to know uh, what is something that a client can do that makes your job easier and more efficient? You know, have expectations, but realistic expectations. Okay. You know, we're realtors. Yeah. We're not magicians. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> we, we can't just put money, pull money out of that hat for you. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just be realistic. Be realistic. So, and also, I guess, put a little bit of trust in your know-how and your knowledge Absolutely. and your experience. Absolutely. You're selling a lot of properties all over the place. Am I right? Absolutely. Okay. Yes. <laughs> that, that, that was a pause. Absolutely. <laughs> I think he is. Thank you so much, Rizwan. I wouldn't really be here good. if I wasn't. That's right. <laughs> really good information. It's time for a break. See you all on the other side. <laughs> Delicious, trendy Parisian food you can make. Well, this is the croque-monsieur. It is extremely viral. You know, mm -hmm. TikTok, everybody's making. Croque means to crunch. Okay. Monsieur means mister. here is because we both had our nose in these cups. <laughs> We're going to take you on a culinary journey to France with three delicious dishes you can make at home. And this is all inspired by his recent trip across the Atlantic to France. Please welcome Chef Matt Dean Pettit. Thank you. Chef Matt Dean Petit, Petit if you will. in today's kitchen, we'll go by Petit. Yeah, because we are being very French today. We are. You have a yes, beret yes, on. I am a beret. Look this, at this. this is from France. It this is, is officially right. It is proper. It looks I, good on you, man. Does it really? I like it. Does it bring you up my eyes? It does. Thank you. <laughs> it really um, does. You know what? It, they're, they're, it's so funny. So I was in Paris nine days. Um, you know, I love France. I've de done the whole country, north and south. And you just take a love of seeing the energy, the food, the passion. Right. You know, the history. Uh, look at those pics. Look at the guy. There he Stunning. is. There's a kid. And right off the right off the top of the show, we were talking about dining al fresco. Uh -huh. This is what I think of when I think of Paris. All the bistros you 100%. sit at, all the outdoor dining, all 100%. the tapas, the whole culture of it. Um, but you brought back the food. I did. I brought back the food from sitting in those places, yeah. eating and everything that, like you said. So Delish. you know, three really great staples. Again. If, if not everybody gets a chance to jump over the border and take a seven-hour flight, yeah. you know, we can do this right at home, right? Just make it and in your kitchen. Make it in your kitchen. And it, it, it is fun food. It is classic. It is rich. I will say, you know, this will put on the, uh, you'll want to have a nap after some of this. So starting <laughs> with one of my favorites, you know that beautiful French soup. onion soup. French onion soup. Now look at that. Always a winner. Always a winner, but fun fact, when you ask the server, can I please have the French onion soup, especially in Paris? Uh, they will look at you and say, sir, it is just onion soup. No, they will say, no. No. <laughs> they go like this. You know what? I, all jokes no. aside, uh, it's amazing. Sometimes France gets a bad rap, uh, certainly Paris, of, of people with that. You know, just attitude. like not one attitude. It's, it's certainly changed. It's, it's really welcoming and hospitable right now. Beautiful. Uh, which is great. So to make French onion soup at home, yeah. again, beautiful onions. You can do, you know, Vidal onions, white onions, whatever you'd like. Um, butter into the pan, you want to roast those onions down, you sorry, braise, um, cook those onions down, you want to mm -hmm. sweat them, salt, pepper, salt always is needed to let them sweat down. Yeah. You want to caramelize those onions, throw it on a low heat. I want to always have beef stock, you can make this into a veggie option, yeah. and a little veggie place. So you could omit the beef for veg, and now you've got that. Mm -hmm. um, either bay leaf or rosemary, you can take these out, of course. But essentially what you want to do is you want to cook that down, stew it down, you get that beautiful richness. Some people add mm. ca uh, cognac, some people add Ooh. a little bit of fancy, yeah. To some give people, it some depth. A little depth, so, yeah. you know, a little balsamic vinegar in some cases. And then, again, you put in the broiler, so on high. Yeah. Uh, be careful, because things will burn. And in your favorite bowls, you can see we've put brioche, always brioche, French beautiful bread. Yes. Uh, super buttery, and then we've topped it with cheese. And you just broil that off a little chopped chive, and away you go. And what cheese do you like to use with your so not either, French onion soup, just not your French onion, onion soup. Just my onion soup, thank you. I'm right? a professional here. <laughs> the beret says it all. Um, <laughs> you know what? It, uh, I always use Emmental, and yeah. if you can't find Emmental, you can do Gruyere, and mm. if you can't find Gruyere, we go Swiss. Okay, good. Yeah. That's one use of what options. you have. Lots it's got to be the meltiest of cheeses, and I agree with putting it in this, this vessel. Totally. I don't know what this thing's called, but the we went and bought them. Classic. Because that just French feels onion right. bowl. The fr okay, the French onion the bowl. The French onion bowl. <laughs> okay, we're going to move right along Let's do to it. a sandwich that is super hot right now uh, online, because we want to pair the soup with the sandwich. 100%. What's it called? So this is the croque monsieur. It is extremely viral. You know, mm -hmm. TikTok, everybody's making. Croque means to crunch. Okay. Monsieur means mister. Yeah. And the madame, do you know the madame version? The croque madame. Croque madame. I, I'm trying to remember how it's different. A lady's hat 
not my beret, but a lady's hat, yeah. is the old, you know, back in the old days, and it is a fried egg. A fried you would do a fried egg, egg and you'd top. pop that right on top. I'm never mad at a fried egg. Oh, no, I not love at all. that. And I love both. I love both, but you know what? Mm -hmm. We just want to make a little, I'm a, you know me, I like to make things easy and simple and, and yes. food that everybody can do. Uh, eggs are actually tough to do for people, most people. True. Um, That's true. Here we go. So brioche bread. We've mm -hmm. made a bechamel. So bechamel, one of our first starting of our master four sauces. Yep. So uh, butter, flour, and you're just whisking that, browning that, putting it in. If anybody's made hollandaise, this is where we start. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? If you made a mornay, you're adding cheese. But a little mm -hmm. bit of butter, uh, milk over time, and you're making that into your sauce. So this is where that little oozy gooey goodness comes in. Beautiful. So here we go. Um, we're going to double up. Let's make let's make a really it's a pretty couple saucy. Here. It is a saucy um, because that's where like sandwich. that richness comes with, right? Yeah. So bechamel into our emmental as we talked about. Nice. Okay. So we're just gonna do that. We're gonna do two pieces on each of these. Ooh. Yeah, we're gonna do two. And we're gonna go in ham. Yep. So this is a very, very fancy, you know, ham and cheese sandwich. Mm -hmm. Actually gonna steal two of these back for a oh, second. Okay. Yep. All right. Because we're gonna double up. Nice. Um, what we want to do, so ham, again, in the States, you know, this could be called like a Monte Cristo. Yeah. But in this case, we're doing just a funky, so there is one. We're turning over at the same time as I'm doing this, Trace. Yeah. I've got my oven at 375. Okay. And I've got that on to uh, to bake. And I'm more I'm hitting bechamel. it with more bechamel. Okay. Right? So this is not for somebody faint of heart. Right. Uh, if saucy <laughs> stuff is not your jam, maybe this isn't your play. Yeah. But who likes a dry sandwich? Right, and then you, and then more. And then cheese. I want more cheese. Right. I'm gonna go in with more cheese. That's what. I that's got ahead what's of so cool about it. So it's like it's a cheesy, melty. It is a cheesy, sandwich. melty Sammy. And we're gonna actually throw two on just because. Why not? Okay. So as we come around, thank you. Is there something mind. special waiting? Oh, there, there is. is. This is the power of TV. All Look right. at this. Come on. Is this? Is it hot, hot, hot? This okay, is medium, hot, hot, hot. I'm even gonna get the oven Good glove. Stuff. We're not even gonna use Chef Han on it, but because that is still hot. So let's be careful here. So <laughs> that was fun. This goes in the oven. We're putting yeah. our crock in the oven for roughly um, five to seven minutes. Yep. You want to bake that through. And then you can finish it with the broil on as well. It doesn't take a long time. It does not take a long time. Do we check for cheese pull right now? We can check for cheese pull, but I'm actually going to bring to that little plate. You go and for it. I'm going to turn that around. Like, this is going to be absolutely stunning. So look at Where that you, cheese. Is this good, Danny? Can you see it there? Okay. So As you're doing that, I'm doing the high garnish. Oh, excuse me, Look at the teamwork chef here. Look at the high garnish. Well, when you have a beret on, you've got to do everything I really like can that. do anything I'd like. Yeah. Yeah. It's sort of my rules. I think I just ruined the cheese pot. Oh, no, that's okay. I think you're going to love that. You take one side, I take Are one side. Like cheesy, cheesy. Yeah. Oh, look I saw it. Yeah, she, this is going to be hot. Careful. Delicious. Crazy, right? Um, little napkin. So good. We're so we've had the soup. Oh. We have the uh, croque monsieur. Now it's time for dessert. And we're almost at a loss for words how savory and delicious that was. Um, in the dessert, it as we delicious. spin this around, crepes. Finishing Look with crepes. So we've got one egg, one cup of flour. Um, you're putting in a little bit of milk. Key is to just whisk, 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 whisk. Make yeah. sure you're getting out all clumps. Hot pan. Little bit of one, two minute per side on a non stick pan. Mm -hmm. Flip, flip, little bit of whip, uh, whipped cream. You can throw in a little fresh strawberry. I finished with a little garnish. This is a perfect, these are three great French little dishes that you can do at home. These are beautiful. Save the expensive flight and it, let's eat. Check our website, cityline.tv, uh, for the recipes because you're going to want to replicate these ones at home for a little bit of wee wee wee. Let's go to break. More coming up. Thank you, Chef Martin. Coming up, let's get fired up about decluttering our space. So, unstuffed ottomans oh, or pillows. All of our winter clothes is in there. Right? Like, so much stuff. So oh, smart. look at them all excited. That's oh. exciting. our homes but there are so many little eyesores everywhere that often we need a way to conceal so here to share her top-notch tips on how to cleverly disguise your clutter designer Kimberly Selden yes. Yes. in our beautiful clutter-free space I mean clutter what clutter I don't see anything well, in here you know how you come home at the end of the day and you look around there's piles of you know stuff this stuff everywhere and you yeah. just feel I feel yes bad about myself and I don't like that so I really do feel better when this space is clutter-free and that's what yes. we're talking about but 
spaces are getting smaller. We're doing a condo right mm -hmm. now, 450 square feet. We've got a house in Hollywood that's 900 square feet. You wow. don't want to build yeah. storage, right? Yeah. That's expensive. So we want to also give you some affordable ideas. Nice. Like, I'm going to start over here. Remember okay. van life? It was a thing during COVID, right? Yes. Everybody got a van. And they were so clever about how they stored things. And I know my girlfriend put all of her clothes in pillows, which went on the bed. Really clever, ah, right? Multi so, usage. Yes. So unstuffed ottomans oh, or look pillows. At that. All of her winter clothes is in there. Right? Like so much stuff. So oh, smart. Look at they're all excited. That's oh. exciting. Honestly. If you saw where my winter clothes was now, uh, you would understand the excitement. I, I do understand the excitement. My mother would say, please don't tell your husband how excited you get over that. <laughs> that just is not what you want to show. Okay. <laughs> toys. Kids' toys. They go yes. every My son was a Lego maniac. Oh, but you know, there yes. are those like soft little cute little children who love stuffed Plushies. animals. Stuffies. Look how many little plushies fitting here. Oh, little hi. Teddy. Hi, Teddy. Hey, Teddy. This little hi, piggy. pig. I think his name is George. <laughs> hi, George. So, you know, you're going to choose an unstuffed ottoman that's a good size for right. what you want to store. And but I this... think that that's a nice way to do it because if you're, the whole thing about kids' toys is that, you know, the whole, the keep it in the playroom. It's never going to happen. No. So if that's in the living room, now they've got easy access to their toys and they can shove them back in there when it's time to clean it up. Exactly right. And nice. look, look how nice looking that is. So that's you can gorgeous. get one as big as you like. Yeah. So this would obviously hold a bunch of sweaters or, yes. or well, I've got blankets in here. I'm going to show you like how nice that is. And then oh, it's going to take smart. us to our next idea. Okay, so, so anyway, do I'm a you, big fan of this. I'm a big fan of blankets. Me, right? I've got them in like anywhere where we sit, there are blankets. You know I can't even watch TV without a blanket I in my a blanket. lap. I literally can't watch TV without yeah. a blanket in my lap. It can so, be August. I want a blanket. Right? And they take a lot of storage, right? Yeah. So you've got a linen cupboard. It's stuffed full of blankets and sheets. Get the blankets yes. out of the linen cupboard and get yourself a beautiful vintage ladder. Oh, Like beautiful. the one behind you. Okay. Maybe you're going to find one at a flea market oh. or a vintage sale. I'm going to give yeah. you that. And Thank we're going to use this as a double purpose. Behind that ladder is an outlet. Yeah. Right? They're always kind of in the wrong place. Maybe they're the wrong color. Mm -hmm. This is a great way to hide them. Get yourself a little ladder, lean it against it, put blankets on it if you're in the living room. Outlet? What outlet? What outlet? What? It's right? gone. It's gone. Nice. Or if you're in a bathroom, towels look really good there as well. Oh, that's smart. So again, it's just a way of freeing up space that you that's hidden yeah. and putting things out in plain sight so you have more room. Beautiful. Fun. Okay, now this art is uh, the thing that jumps out at me the right? most in this space. It's like you're anything like, hidden under there. What's hiding? <laughs> what's happening? Well, this is taking care of clutter of a different sort. This is taking care of acoustic clutter. Okay. So this is a wonderful uh, company. Marie Dooley is the owner of the company, and they mm. sell beautiful art panels like this, which they hand sew in Quebec City. Ooh. And then they are lined with this one and a half inch thick wool acoustic lining. Okay. So this is going to give you an, an acoustic rating, an NRC rating, noise reduction coefficient rating of 85%. You sounded very smart in that I, moment. I had to memorize that. That was hard. was really throwing me. Hard I was words. really, really working. How could you see the smoke coming out of it? Yes. I'm impressed. You're NRC. Okay, okay. so I wanted to know, 85%, that seems high. How does it compare to other things? So, for example, a carpet NRC would only be about 30%. But because oh. it's such a big piece in a space, it yes. can help with noise reduction. So Just like light pollution is yes. really jarring and uncomfortable, noise pollution is really hard on you. It is. As I get older as well, I find okay. I'm way more noise sensitive. It's like my right. husband listening to full volume videos on his phone. Right. I need this. Right. Or podcasters unite. If you've got a space oh. and you want to be recording your podcast at home, like why not make it beautiful with this art? So much better than that waffly, styrofoamy yeah. looking stuff yeah. like beautiful pieces that stand on their own but Very a nice. really good choice or if you're that person who takes your zoom meetings in the toilet don't do that but if you do that <laughs> if you, that you know who you are <laughs> yes, you can tell because it sounds like you're in an acoustic tunnel right but you definitely need this and very very affordable i will yes. say too if you're on an art budget great great oh, choice that's good. That's yeah very good. Guess, guess okay so these are beautiful uh they look like wall decor what am i hiding 
Hmm. Mm. Is it the place where you tried to hang the picture and there's holes in the wall now? That could be a really good choice. Because <laughs> that's okay. what it'd be for me. So there's this wonderful vendor. They're called Hauer Market. It's a mother-daughter okay. team, and they scour the world. Turkey, China. This came from northern China. Oh, beautiful. It's called the Nico Hat. Uh -huh. And the farmers would wear it to keep the sun off their heads, but yeah. it's got this beautiful ventilation. Mm -hmm. My biggest pet peeve, well, it's not my biggest, it's pet peeve number 372, right. if I'm being honest. <laughs> when you go into a new condo with a client and you see, like, the thermostat exactly yeah. where you want to hang a piece of art. Yep. Or a big bank of light switches exactly where the art goes. Mm -hmm. I always look for pieces that have breathability that can hide those things. Lovely. And these are gorgeous. Let's talk kitchen and bathroom. Are we hiding anything? Are, aren't we? Well, I mean, I can let's. only speak for myself. I'm hiding my processed cheese, because I'm embarrassed. You do? Processed cheese? Are you, you into it? No. Oh, not see? even a little. She judged me. No, I know. So I need a place I, to hide it. I, I'll share something embarrassing with you. What I, do you got in your uh, fridge uh, that you're embarrassed about? Just I throw it out there. Is it whipped cream uh, from the can? No, I'll think about it. I don't know. Is I it that, is it that it. cheese that comes in a squeeze bottle? No, honestly, my <laughs> my refrigerator has tequila and Perrier. It's That's kind a of good what's fridge. in my refrigerator. Like, don't judge me. That's yeah. a good fridge. But I'll tell you what I don't want to look at on a kitchen counter. Yeah. Paper towels. Yeah. It just makes makes me feel sad. So, again, <laughs> Howard Market, beautiful pottery beautiful. vessels. Aren't these stunning urns, Oh, my bowls, gosh. What are we pot, doing in the bathroom? Let's pot. not talk about it. Okay, the so toilet when, paper. when my husband and I bought our first house, the yeah. owners left big Costco-sized packages of toilet paper That's just amazing. out and exposed. Oh, okay. I thought that That's was a sad. Nice gift. I think this is so much nicer. This is So beautiful. get yourself a bowl that can, you can throw garbage away. You can hide the toilet paper. Just guess what's in there. Anything you want. Okay, what is it? Oh, it's bug spray. Could be sunscreen. Could, Could be, be your sunscreen. lint brush. Could be the keys. Could be the, your yeah. chapstick. Very nice. Just, just put things away. It feels better. You'll, you'll be glad you did. Good for the brain, That's right? It. You got more space. So that QR code on the screen right now, that's how you actually get oh. the products that we have here. You can scan that QR code, and we'll lead you to them. And then you can shop the show. Let's go to break. We got more coming up. Yeah. Yeah. I'm the big yeah. fan of the QR yeah. code. Coming up, Brian straightens me out on the concept of quiet luxury. Quiet luxury is saying, shh, I'm rich. No, I'm just no. Quiet luxury. And when you think quiet luxury, the image that should come in your head is Brian. <laughs> well, this is how you dress. This is how you move through the world. It's very quiet luxury. Yes, like, there's nothing yes. loud and screaming. No. Um, but, you know, like, you're classy and you got style. So, is oh, this a trend? Yes. Feel good. Yes, he's got style Thank and you. he's classy. Yes. Um, it, this it, is a trend. This is not for me. Not for you. Not for me. Not for you. But it is, seems like everyone's talking about it now, quiet luxury. Yes. And I think really what it is about is about not being sort of in your face. Yes. A little over the top, a little glitzy, a little, yeah. you know, my thing about I don't like logos. I don't like logos on yeah. clothes. So to me, don't wear a lot, unless they're paying you. Right. Um, don't wear it. I don't, and then wear all of it. And then wear, yeah, wear it all over. But that is a part of quiet luxury. A quiet luxury is saying, shh, I'm rich. No. No, just no. <laughs> <laughs> no. It's basically, it's basically, it's letting the luxury speak for itself. If you buy quality items, you don't have to be shouting to anyone that they're quality items. Correct, and you can it mix will it. It look quality, and you mix. You mix it. Doesn't mean you, you have mix. to spend a lot of money. You can right. wear a beautiful sweater with. I'll show you an interior. Yeah. With Although a gap I like t -shirt. my definition better. Like an, you can wear. Shh, I'm rich. Yes, but you can wear <laughs> like a like I'm wearing a t-shirt, a long sleeve t-shirt. You can wear a an eight dollar t-shirt with a nice sweater, but you have totally. it forever. So let's get into interiors, which is. Me. This is really this what is we're really talking me. about right now. But I also <laughs> like the mix. Okay. So it's like, like I think of when I think of quiet luxury, I think of Audrey Hepburn, yes. Cary Grant. You know, Audrey Hepburn. You look at old pictures; she looks so gorgeous. Yeah. Uh, and it's Breakfast simple. at Tiffany's, that beautiful black yeah. dress. Very simple. So with interiors, it takes the same sort of thing. But I really like the mix. Okay. So I like to mix vintage pieces in our interior. So in this one, this is a house we did in Aspen, and mm. the client had this beautiful old painting from her grandparents. And we did this very modern fireplace, very modern um, paneling, 
beautiful, luxurious carpet that felt so, so good nice. on your feet. You take off your shoes, and you're like, oh, okay, I get it. It's <laughs> I could soft, sleep here. it's yummy. Yeah. You want to lie on it in front of the fireplace. Mm -hmm. um, this is uh, my apartment in New York. This is what I'm all about. What well, are those called again? Uh, that's French studying? nails. Oh, studying. French yeah. nails. Oh, yes. I like that. So one of the things I did is I had this really fabulous um, Greek vase. Beautiful. But I put it on, I bought an Ikea shelf. I couldn't be, I couldn't wait for the contractor to do it. Yeah. So I went to Ikea and we had extra wallpaper. This is all linen wallpaper. And I glued the wallpaper on it and yeah. I mounted it myself. And look how beautiful that looks. I'm so proud of you. I know. It's shocking that <laughs> no, I did anything did it, myself. He did a DIY. I still sit yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. You get applause for that. I'm very proud of you. I do sit there every this so often beautiful. and think, I hope that doesn't fall off the wall. <laughs> yeah. And then, like, you know, and then the, the luxury, again, not about so much about price, but the, yeah. the feeling of velvet pillows and these gorgeous, rich colors in velvet. And this is a project we did in Palm Beach, and the client, she likes a little... A little glitz. A little glitz. A little razzle-dazzle. So what I did for her is I got her this beautiful um, gilded mirror, which had a shell on it, so it suited the beach, yeah. and this, this antique settee that had oh, a little gold yeah. on it, so it, with the rattan. So it was yeah. mixing that little bit of gold, but I had these rattan chairs, which are Jean-Michel Frank from the 40s, so they brought it down a little bit. It wasn't like... It's a nice way to do it. It's not gaudy at all, which at I all. think is really beautiful. I don't want you to have a gaudy house. I want you to no. have a house that's going to last forever. That's right, and, and you're going to like it forever. And you're going to love it. Yeah. And in this one, it's all about, we did wall finishes and paneling. So in this one, we did this contemporary paneling mm -hmm. with wallpaper in the center. This is so easy to do. And then those antique, these are Swedish sconces, but with the modern fireplace. Again, I love carpets. Beautiful, yeah. luxurious carpets. In this one, I did the paneling with a console. Someone might have put like a brass console with a marble top on it. Yeah. No, I just want you kept it simple. this beautiful Japanese style console in this brushed oak. Now, I have a lamp that's marble, but it's a honed marble, so mm -hmm. it's not over there. And in this, I did the upholstered walls. Ooh, and I the, love that. And the furniture, when you look at a chair like that, it should feel fabulous. Like, yes. Like this. Feel this. Oh, wow. Yeah, that feels good. Okay, so this feels what like... What is it? Well, it feels like cashmere is polyester. Oh, my gosh. So this is very affordable, but I, when I was showing everybody in the office here... Oops. Yeah. So excited about this. <laughs> <laughs> did I go to the right one? You did right. But look at this also. Pleated, this beautiful pleating for a gorgeous. pillow. So it's about layering. It's about understatement. It's about, you know, mixing quality and having fun with accessories and lighting. There's so many ways to do it in your decor. We might and have to it, do it another is about, We're going to have to do another segment for sure, but uh, I love that you're the embodiment of it. It's oh. time for a break. We'll be right back, everyone. Stay with us. What better way to end the show uh, than with a little bit of bubbly? I've had a lot of... I, I was very distracted today, and it was all of your faults. <laughs> it was all of your faults of having too much fun off camera. Thank you, Brian, for the tips today. Thank you, Thank you MDP, you. for that incredible food. Thank you, Rizwan. Did we learn about our real estate, right? Lots of insider info there. And thank you, Kimberly, for hiding our toilet paper. You're so welcome. I mean, what would we do? <laughs> what would we do? And I want to say a big thank you to all of the uh, City Line viewers at home that meet us here today and every day. And who did I forget? You all in the audience!